Okay, it's official. I am very much concerned about Yu-Gi-Oh's future. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most angry R32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher. The 1400 light, we're almost at 1500 now. Can you believe it? Never thought we'd make it this far. Really do appreciate all of the support. You're probably wondering, Avery, why do you have a smile on your face with your intro if you're talking about the potential rest and pepperonis of Yu-Gi-Oh? Um, it's not actually because of Speed Duel, and I do want to talk about that. Um, it has more to do with ban list implications um, because that's what really scares me. So first of all, let's talk about the whole Speed Duel uh, thing that has come out. So there was a post on uh, Reddit on r slash Yu-Gi-Oh! It's basically just everything Yu-Gi-Oh! related in Reddit, right? And there was a distributor that posted on Reddit talking about how there's going to be one more Speed Duel product before Speed Duel is just blown out of the water. Like, it's not going to be supported anymore. It's not going to see any more releases. And we saw the writing on the wall with this. Like, with the Midterm Paradox box, it was a North American-only set. It didn't go to Europe. And so now... According to this Brazil distributor, we're going to have one more product, maybe just for North America, whatever the case may be. It's going to go out to the masses, and then we're going to be done with speed duels. And honestly, this really isn't that much of a surprise for me. If you look back at all of the different things that Konami has tried with Yu-Gi-Oh! that have not been advanced format related because they really haven't done anything with traditional since the ban list was invented back in like 2004... Um, everything that they've tried just hasn't worked. You know, you look back at Dungeon Dice Monsters when they tried to capitalize on the uh, Duel Monsters era talking about um, Dungeon Dice Monsters and when they had that whole side, um, I guess, arc. And it didn't work out. Like, they would put out the dice and then you had the game board and you would do all that stuff. And it was cute. It was adorable. But it really didn't have the staying power um, as the normal advanced format did. You know, the biggest issue I feel with these different Yu-Gi-Oh! formats and these subset of games for Yu-Gi-Oh! is that unless it's a video game that is supposed to, you know, simulate the Yu-Gi-Oh! game itself, it's very difficult to get people into. You know, if you... Even someone like me, who they probably want to market like a different type of Yu-Gi-Oh! format to, it's very tough because... As a competitive player, I'm already spending money on meta decks, and I'm already playtesting the advanced format. Then you want to introduce something like Speed Duel, Rush Duel, whatever the case may be, and somehow you're going to try and get me involved in that while also still playing the advanced format? That's a very tough sell. And so once we started hearing that like Europe wasn't going to get certain products and things... It really didn't surprise me. Speed Duel, more than anything, at least in my local area here in Jacksonville, Florida, we all saw it as like just easy reprints. Like that's really all it was. Like I remember people wanting to get hollow versions of Shard of Greed when Speed Duel first started. And now Shard of Greed's a garbage card. Like maybe you wanted like a copy of like a holographic Jinzo or something as I try and pull my camera back up. Um, you know, you had certain things available to you. But that's not why I'm saying that Yu-Gi-Oh! is now looking like if th if things don't work out, I really do feel like the game is going to slowly wither away and just be buried. We now have the Master Duel, aka Master Shits ban list, and we also have the OCG ban list. And what's interesting I've noticed with the past few ban lists is that we can kind of pull things from those ban lists and kind of see what our ban list is going to look like. So a perfect example being Bonfire. I firmly believe Bonfire is going to go to two, possibly one, but probably more like go to semi-limited on our upcoming ban list because it is now at two in both the OCG and Master Shits. And it seems to be things that get hit in those two ban lists, we sometimes see those things translate to our ban list. Um, obviously not always, right? Like Master Shits, now they've put Zeus to two. We're not going to see Zeus go to two in the TCG. Zeus is, I would argue, a non-factor. Like when I'm sitting down to play a competitive game, I'm not considering Zeus as a factor unless I'm playing against purely and no one plays Zodiac in my locals because Zodiac is hot garbage. Like if you play against Zoo, then yeah, sure, you have to consider Zeus um, as an issue in Zodiac. But like outside of purely, no decks are really playing Zeus because Sky Crisis just kind of checks the card. Um, but 
seeing all the dragon rulers go to two or to three on our next list, I could see. Now, here's the issue. The issue is, is that as my phone goes off behind me and it's driving me nuts, as we look at both of these lists, they didn't hit snake eyes. And that is scary. Because when you look at Master Shits, they didn't touch Snake Eyes at all. I think that they've hit Snake Eyes in different ways. But the Snake Eye deck is still the best deck in Master Shits after this ban list. Like, the moment I saw that list for Master Shits, I was like, well, Snake Eyes is still the best deck. Like, no shot that it's not. OCG, Snake Eyes is still the best deck. I am worried that Konami wants Snake Eyes to be around for, like, a year or nine months and they're going to do consistency hits to the deck instead of going after what makes the deck so good. Something like OSS or Flamberge Dragon or Promethean fucking Princess. These are things that Konami needs to hit that I think that they won't just based off of the Master Shits balance and the OCG balance. Kind of just ignoring Snake Eyes for the most part. Like yeah, in the OCG Snake Eyes got a couple of hits. But it's still going to be the best deck. And I've seen a lot of people, especially in my balance discussion video, they were talking about like ways to hit Snake Eyes. And people, some, I saw some people who were like, no, you shouldn't hit OSS. That's not really going to do anything, blah, 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 blah. Here's the reason why OSS, like if Konami does anything on our upcoming list, this is why OSS needs to be banned. OSS gets you any level one fire. It doesn't lock you in anything. It doesn't negate the monster's effects. You're not locked into fires. So... Just by establishing a body on the field, any face-up card on the field even, uh, you could play out the Millennium Dynasty Shield or the Caveman, whatever, and then go OSS to send it, and then you just get your free level 1 fire body. By banning OSS, you can still do Snake Eyes shenanigans, like you can go Ash and Poplar, Poplar gets you the Divine Temple, which can set up a Snake Eyes, Diabell Star, Flame Bird, whatever the case may be. But now, without OSS... You can't turn that one of Snake Eyes Ash into like OSS, which can become Flamberge into Promethean. And like, uh, we all know the combos for that, right? Like, I don't need to sit here and explain them to you. So, you take OSS out of the equation, it really fixes the Snake Eyes deck because you can still play it. It's still good as like a sub engine in pretty much any deck in the game. But now you eliminate that factor of it being so good and so explosive that. Anything that a Snake Eyes deck does, you have to hand trap if it's not named Wanted Seeker of Simple Spools because that's not worth it to really hand trap that card. You know, there's a reason why people like Pac say if the card that the Snake Eyes player is dropping onto the field is not wanted, you hand trap it. If it's Black Witch, hand trap. Snake Eyes Ash, hand trap. Poplar, hand trap. Because all of these things are one card starters. Black Witch gets you to OSS, which gives you full combo. Snake Eyes Ash gets you to Poplar, which can get you to uh, OSS, which is full combo. So by having all of these one card starters in your Snake Eye deck, plus not even considering the Fiendsmith cards that just make your deck more consistent where you can do shit like Beatrice dump Snake Eyes Ash to Grave, you know, get back the Snake Eyes Ash somehow and like you're just off to the races or even setting up two Fiend, uh, Fiendsmith Engravers, about to call it the Fiendsmith, but now it's Fiendsmith Engraver in the TCG, setting up two Engravers to make a Wave High King Caesar so that the Snake Eyes player can't even get nibbed is crazy. And so if they go the consistency route and hit like Bonfire to two, Ash and Poplar to one, uh, I don't know, Wanted to one, like stuff like that, it's not going to matter because there are so many generically good cards in the game now, especially post-Infinite Forbidden, that that loss in consistency that Snake Eyes gets, they can make up for just by playing, say, like a 60-card pile of just good stuff with like 20 hand traps and just like any other 40 cards that they want to play around, you know, with Snake Eyes. So I'm really afraid because if they go that route, I really feel that Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to be dead in the water. Because then we will have three formats with Snake Eyes. The first one being when we had Link, Rebo, Baron, and Borload. They banned those cards. The end board became more manageable in Snake Eyes, which is good. There's no Omni Negates. In theory, they don't really have a way to out something like an Evenly Match. Outside of like SP banishing itself and another monster. But then we go into now this current format. That's now two formats with Snake Eyes at full power. Not to mention that they've won six fucking YCSs in a row including the team YCSs. If you don't count those, then it's like four. But they have the most number of YCS wins in a row when you consider team YCSs, which is insane to think about. If they don't hit Snake Eyes on this 
list that we should be getting any day now, probably by like July 1st through 3rd is what I'm thinking, that's now three formats that we are having to deal with Snake Eyes, which at that point you may as well go back to releasing a balance like every six to nine months, like what we had years ago. That really scares me because I can tell you right now I'm not going to be playing in this upcoming format because I'm tired of dealing with Snake Eyes. And it's hard to deck build even now for it because it's like if I want to build like something post-Infinite Forbidden, I'm like I have to play Snake Eyes cards because they're just that good. You know, you can say, oh, Avery, you can play something that doesn't need Snake Eyes cards, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you're at a big fucking disadvantage. Like if you're going to play pure cash Tira, you're basically banking on the fact that you hope to see Dimension Shifter. And if you don't, you crap your pants all over the venue floor and lose because you're not playing Snake Eyes cards. Like why play pure cash when you can play Snake Eye Cash and just have a better deck overall? Uh, I'm really tired of this format. I'm tired of just Konami wanting to keep a fire deck alive for whatever reason. And it's it's not good. It's not good design. You know, even ignoring the issue of having too many hand traps in the game, that is an issue. But like, let's at least deal with snake eyes and we can go back to hand traps later. Uh, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm really afraid for the game's lifespan. It's been around for 25 years. I'd like to see it be around for another 25. I don't think it's going to be around for another 25 days at this point. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.